This is Daily Blast Live. We're talking about what you're talking about. Real, honest, entertaining, live. DBL starts right now. Beta. <laughs> Welcome to DBL. I'm Sam here with Jeff Allen Tori. Let's get started. So when singer Billie Eilish debuted a new sexier look on the cover of Vogue, we all gave her thoughts or our thoughts rather on her look. Well, all of us except Jeff. Take a look. Now, it's a dramatic departure for Billie, who we are all used to seeing a little bit more covered up in baggy clothing. I thought she looked like an 11 out of a 10. But you talked about her issues that she had with uh, body positivity and all this stuff. So I was just wondering, also for her fans that are still struggling with that, she might literally alienate people because they're still going through that. So I'm just wondering, for, for the person that wants to be the spokesperson for that and wear all these baggy clothes for years, to now be wearing lingerie, and I learned that from you, like how does that make sense? What if she grew? Can she not grow? I mean, I guess I understand that she can grow, but it's like I, you also don't have to take on the roles like the spokes. I mean, she's done articles about it, exposés. She's done cover stories sure, about she it. She was that baggy. Right, she I was have like a this body person. Dysmorphia, it's like right. um, Sia just deciding to take off the wig. And I know it's not the same thing as like a body struggle, but like taking off the wig and just like not see it anymore. I, I see you. I see it as, as we're watching someone grow up sort of right, being more comfortable with herself in front of us. And I think that's lovely to see, but I do see what you're saying about alienating a certain group of people. What do you think, Jeff? I think um, as a male, I should not comment on other females' <laughs> body parts. <laughs> Jeff, you're being so yeah, you're PG. Being like Not even 13, just straight up PG today. I can't it's believe Monday it. And uh, <laughs> I looked at my family before I left. I'm like, you know what? I love my family and my house. I'm gonna keep it PG today. Wow. Okay. I don't want to get fired. <laughs> wow. I think she looks great. I think you, I think you should do whatever you want to do. That's what I think. I think if you want to take pictures, baggy clothes, good for you. If you want to show off your body a little bit, good for you. Let us know what you Lindsay, you don't like that answer? I appreciate it, Jeff. You're neutral Nancy today. I get it. Someone. Listen, I'm with two women judging a woman's story. No, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Switzerland. <laughs> I think Jeff played it not safe. He played it respectful. Thank you, Sam. Some, listen, people, what people don't understand is sometimes you just get tired of getting beat up. You know what I mean? Like, hey, let's comment on this. Okay, white guy, what do you think? I'm going to comment on a woman's body when one of the women is pregnant on well, there. I'm going to say I how your comment. body's changing. I, I will say this, because I, I, it's weird. I actually thought about this this weekend randomly. Do I feel comfortable commenting on But I feel like... What is your all, answer? My answer is, it depends on your relationship. If I see Tori, who I spent most of the, most of the last four years with, I'm like, what you been doing to your arms, girl? You're ripped. You look, hey, your, your waist looks yeah, great. Yeah, but that's a, I, that's a go compliment. Go the other way. No, yeah, go the other way with exactly. that. Exactly. I don't know, but I wouldn't, do wouldn't, that to, I wouldn't do that to Jeff either. I wouldn't be like, man, you you are really getting chubby. I would just say, hey, I, would, I wouldn't say that to anybody. <laughs> you look good, don't worry. Yeah, so that's what I'm saying. I just dropped I eight pounds. I wouldn't, would you say anything mean to somebody? A lot of people How you Your good friends, you tell somebody when they have something in their teeth, that's you gotta a, be a good friend. All right, this is you, well, this next story has got us all talking like I just was. Uh, a groom good was one. caught checking his phone, uh-uh-uh, while the bride was walking down the aisle. Cool is this ever okay? Mm. Great job. <laughs> Great job. Here's one example that's gone viral. So a woman shared this video of her wedding from four years ago. As she's walking down the aisle, the camera's focused on her fiance who happens to check his phone. No, he didn't. Yes, at the worst. No, he didn't. Wait for it. Possible. No, he time. did not. No, wait. No, Hold he up. did not. Hold up. Erica, wait this. Now, in his defense, she says he was checking to make sure he that's had his right. vows I on that makes sense. the phone, okay? What's that face for? He looked nervous. He was he sweating. First of all, he that is a marquee moment <laughs> in a wedding. Okay? It's true. He could have done that as the groomsmen were walking out. Maybe as his mama was walking out if he was going to do that when his future wife was walking out. But everybody looks at the groom to see what the reaction is going to be as the bride is walking down the aisle. And the groom Erica, should be captivated. Erica, Erica, you speak for a living. You don't have the fear of speaking in front of people, which is most people's number one fear. And also, it's your Over Wedding day. Over death. Over That's death. Right. And it's your wedding day. And you don't want to blow it. And I'm sure, like, he's panicking. He's swaying. He got his hands in his pockets. He's looking weird. And he's just like, oh, what do I, how do I start off? And I think he just needed a glance mm. to just, like, if I get the first two words out, I'm good. good. It was yeah, a bad but he, look. He wasn't was starting look. the first two words. That's what the officiant is for. Mm. He could have taken the 
30 seconds to watch the woman walk down the aisle while everybody else it is, is a watching big him. moment. It's a, it's a big moment. It's a big moment. But let me ask you guys this. Are you guilty of checking your phones at the worst possible time? Is anyone bad at this? Terrible. Oh, she's only But I up. did. What's I did. Uh, I didn't time? do it as I was walking down the aisle. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I did a... <laughs> I don't even know if I can see this. Oh, no, I definitely no. want to Please. <laughs> I was on my phone during a physical, like an annual oh, at boy. the OBGYN. Oh, wow. I, well, it's, hey, it was It's important. a distraction. What were you looking at? It was important. I had to text something. <laughs> Hey, that's comfortable. Multitasking. That's very comfortable. It's not comfortable Jeff, at all, what Jeff. What about it's you? Not. I feel like, Jeff, you, like, are good with getting rid of your phone as soon as you walk through the door. Yeah, I'm good with that. But it takes, like, I have to put it down. Like, I have to be conscious of it. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? But I've taken time. Like, I'm, I don't go on social media for now. I'm taking a little break. So that takes up a lot of your time, it takes I've a noticed, huge amount, right? So yeah. I don't care or have to look at Instagram. And I think that's what a lot of people are looking at is, like, ooh, did I get likes? Somebody? Does that sound like anybody? Tor yeah. Tori yeah. cares about likes and that's it. I do. That makes you like everybody. But I also am now learning what a dopamine hit it is and how fake it is and how fleeting it is. And I'm working on bettering self-validation. There you go. It's Ooh. like the same thing in Vegas. The slot machines, they say it's the same as looking Oh, I love the Instagram. slots. I'm a big slot fan. Okay. Uh -oh. <laughs> I ran out a lot of money in Vegas. <laughs> Like something's happening in Vegas. Well, I did. I, I was like addicted and it's the exact, you're absolutely right. I rang into the ATM and there was a sign that was like, is this going too far for you? And I called my bank and I was like, I need more money. And they're like, slow it down. Same don't Your bank picked up and told you to slow I, it and down? What ATM were you at where it says, are you going too far? In Vegas. Wow. When there's gambling. Get out of here. They want you to swear, spend money. What were you on? I was really into the slots. Okay. Are, are you going too far? And then there's How the much? bank answer. Sure. Right, Tori, slow it down. Well, <laughs> is this the bank? It's me, Tori. For money. They wouldn't let me. Okay. Coming up on DVL. Get out of here. We are talking to actor and comedian Mike Epps. He's weighing in on cancel culture and its impact on comedy. That's coming up next. <laughs> the Delta variant continues to race across the U.S., but what makes this COVID mutation more dangerous? Let's connect the dots. When you take a closer look at the Delta variant, it doesn't look all that threatening. It actually has fewer genetic changes than earlier versions. But what it does have makes it very good at spreading from person to person. That includes creating an incubation period of four days instead of six, so people are contagious earlier. That means people infected with Delta on average pass it to six other people instead of the two to three people infected by people with the original version. So what mutations does Delta have? Well, one affects spike proteins. You know, those spikes that make the coronavirus so recognizable. The mutation increases the number of those spike proteins, which is bad because it uses those spikes to invade cells. It also has another one that appears to increase the viral load in patients, which would explain why people with Delta have a thousand times more of the virus in their respiratory tract. Scientists don't believe the Delta variant is any more lethal than other COVID mutations. The severity of the disease people are suffering is similar to the original strain, but that doesn't mean it's not more deadly because it can infect so many more people and quickly we may see higher death tolls. My name is Erica Cobb. My hair is 100% authentically me, and so are my opinions. I am from Chicago, Illinois, and that's where my career started. My role on the panel is the voice of reason, if sometimes you want to be questionably unreasonable. It's part of growing up. Get him, girl. And no, this is no, part of it. Growing up, Al, is part of growing up. It's super disrespectful. Revealing my natural hair on live TV was one of the most liberating things I've ever done. Let me tell you. I would have been in the salon a long time ago if I knew it got a standing ovation. <laughs> and as a result, I know that that's affected a lot of other women who want to be their most authentic self. And I carry that with me every day. DBL is unapologetic. DBL is organic. DBL is fearless. DBL is you.
Welcome back to Daily Blast Live. The legacy of great sitcoms continues with Mike Epps and his latest TV project, The Upshaws, on Netflix. We take a look back at our talk with Mike in this encore presentation of Chatting with the Stars. <laughs> Mike Epps, welcome to DBL. How are you? Yes. I'm good. How y'all doing? Y'all looking really good and snappy and flashy and fancy. <laughs> we yeah. tried. Snappy man. was for me. Uh, fancy was for me. <laughs> uh, okay, so we're going to get into the upshaws. But first, at the start of the pandemic, you became a girl dad again. So I wanted to wish you a congratulations. You now have six daughters total. I don't know how you do it. What are the best and worst parts about being a girl dad? I have one girl myself. Well, you know, as you know, the, the little ladies are always expensive. They, 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 they're, they're not a cheap date at all, you know. Uh, but I love my girls, man. They keep me grounded. And, you know, when you got six daughters, you know, you just you always think about uh, having a good place in heaven and a nice place in jail. You know, <laughs> you, know you got to get the shotgun out. You got to get your, I got six shotguns, you know, <laughs> but uh, it's beautiful having daughters. I, you know, you get a chance to see, you know, you see your mother and all your daughters mm. and your aunts and they're like extended families and they, and they all think they own me too, you know. <laughs> oh, look at that picture. Wow. That's how it should be. Yeah. I love know. It. Yeah, your, your girls, I, my, my daughter graduated eighth grade this weekend and I was, bro, I, I was a mess. I was even with the mask, you oh, know, like when you crying so bad, like it's like you feel like you're distracting the, the ceremony might before we get started. I, I just want to tell you really quickly, man, I've been doing stand up for 13 years and I tour with Bill, my, my buddy Bill Bellamy, who spoke super highly of you. I toured with him for a couple of years. And, That's uh, my man. You, I love he, Bill. Bill and Big E, I mean, two of the best guys ever. And just, uh, you know, you guys are the reason that I'm here uh, watching you guys do stand up and, 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 and keep it so real. And uh, that kind of leads me Don't to my first question. Don't it feel good, man? Don't it feel good to stand there? It, it, man, we're here. We, we're here, and it's because of guys like you uh, that were just uh, blazing trails. Thank I remember, you, like, man. you come through to, to the old Miami Improv, and, like, there would be a buzz a couple weeks before. That's where I started my career, to be a buzz before you got there. So you still still shining on Netflix right now. Mm -hmm. And uh, th th that's my question, because different from back then, kind of pre-internet times, now you have to know that when you're on stage, people are recording what you say. And uh, as the kids say, you got to secure that bag. So are you worried about saying something on stage that's going to uh, – affect uh your job you know as an actor or hollywood and all that stuff well you know now that i got a hit show on tv I, i'm definitely gonna edit everything <laughs> <That's> <laughs> honest. you know what i mean i got i got something to lose i mean you know the thing of it is we we comics and we walk a thin line when it comes to speaking our mind and having material because how could you not be a comic and tell your truth you know, it's it's kind of it's it's kind of hard, man. So, you know, when I'm up there and I'm in it, you know, I just have to pray before I go up there because sometimes I say stuff, but you know, I don't talk about things that are gonna hurt people's feelings. But I am truthful about myself and my surroundings. <laughs> Absolutely, like. Mike, you're an Indiana guy, you're from the Midwest, and your new show takes place in the Midwest, The Upshaws. How much is it, is it anything like your real life at all? Do you, do you have any personal stories that you put into the show? <laughs> oh, that's a, that's a tricky question. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think it's a little bit too much about my real life. <laughs> You know, when, when when the writers was writing it, I said, man, they must be, they must have a, a private investigator on me or something because I don't know how this stuff of my real life end up on the script. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> but, you know, the writers, Regina Hicks and Wanda Sykes, they did a great job writing. And they, they made the characters really familiar. You know, they made my character familiar uh, um, and the kids. I mean, they made everybody's characters familiar to real people, and we haven't seen that on TV since Lord knows when. Good times back in those days. We come from the Norman Lear television show, so yes, it was just great to uh, to to be able to bring that same time and that we watch all in the family and all of those shows when we were kids, and to be able to do it as an adult 
with Kim Fields and Wanda Sykes. Mm -hmm. what? You guys are all hilarious. Do you get to improv at all, or do you guys get to, or do you guys have to stick to the script? Oh man, it was it was definitely time to improv. But when you get great writers like Wanda Sykes and Regina Hicks, and when it's on the paper. You you barely have to go off the paper, you know. You you barely have to go off the paper. And then we had we had veteran Kim Fields, man, who we seen on Facts of Life, mm -hmm. living single. Kim has been in we the know, studio. She's, a, she's a friend of the show. Kim has been. We expect been, you to be in the studio too yeah, soon, you, man. You need to come join us as well. Kim was a great addition to our table. She had a lot of great opinions to lend. And yes, yeah, she is. She's a great woman and, and, a, and a great actress. And we were just, it was just a pleasure to have her. Well, we're, we're, we're big fans and we want you to come to join us you. as well. And we're so proud of you. You can watch episodes of the Upshot. Where's y'all studio at? Where's the studio we're at? We're in Denver, if so, you can believe just it. Just whenever you play comedy works or if you do a theater, if you do Paramount Theater, just come through. I got to come through, man. I, I love y'all, man. Y'all, y'all. Y'all all look good, y'all dress good, and y'all talk, y'all got really good questions. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, oh, my man. Oh, love it. We'll be right back. Thank you, Mike. Thanks, Thanks Mike. Mike. Some people hesitant to get the COVID vaccine point to the fact that they haven't gotten full FDA approval yet. So when will that happen? Let's connect the dots. Right now, the COVID-19 vaccines being used in the U.S. do not have full FDA approval. They have something called emergency use authorization. That doesn't mean they are not safe or effective. The vaccines have been through rigorous clinical trials. Pfizer submitted its application for full approval in May, and Moderna began a rolling submission in June. Johnson & Johnson has said it will submit its application later this year. Typically, it takes the FDA several months to give full approval to a vaccine. In an interview with The Washington Post, the agency's top vaccine official says the process involves going through hundreds of thousands of pages submitted by the companies. In order to put the COVID vaccines on the fast track for full approval, the FDA is stopping other work to prioritize getting these applications done. The FDA is not giving a timeline yet, but some experts estimate Pfizer could get full approval by the fall. Whether that'll persuade vaccine skeptics is still uncertain, but lawmakers and health experts note that official FDA approval could help universities and local governments impose vaccine mandates. DBL is your daytime destination. I, I get very excited. I was excited with you. Okay, thank okay. you. Thank you. <laughs> we are fired up. I am feeling very disagreeable. Educate yourself. Though right. I gotta push back because sometimes. No, no, I won't accept that. <laughs> Check that. And having fun. Did you have two straws and a strawberry shake. <laughs> I, I felt it in my heart left. and in my soul. What's That's Jack right. thinking? I don't want to get canceled. <laughs> DBL's all new every day. Welcome back to DBL. It is time for some sweet, sweet deals. Earlier, Steph showed Tori some amazing products at even better prices. Here's this week's DBL Deal Blast presented by MorningSave.com. Steph, what do you have for us today? Hey, Tori, I've got some wonderful products and some killer deals, and I can't wait to share them with everyone. So first up, this is not a sham. It's the <laughs> two-pack revive three-piece satin sleep set, two pillowcases, two oh. eye masks, and two scrunchies. Oh, love. This set is available in gray, pink, or black. Now, I'm gonna keep one set, and I'm gonna give one to you, oh. because I love this. It is a sweet deal that's gonna guarantee you sweet dreams. Love that. So normally, this is as much as $60, oh. but right now, we've got it only for 19, <laughs> saving up to $60. 68%. Sweet dreams are made of savings. I love huh? that, Tori. Thank you. I'm just saying if you have hair that's breaking like mine, satin is the way to go. I learned that from my yes. hairstylist. Yes. So what happens when you tie your hair in a regular elastic band? It can really snap off all your hair. This is an easy way because the satin is going to protect all your hair, uh, hair strands so you won't get that breakage. And also, I'm the biggest lover ever of an eye mask. I only wear eye masks. Are you kidding me? I don't want to see any light. Now, Tori, 
10% of all of the profits of our next steal goes to organizations like Save the Elephants. Oh, I love that. I love yeah. this. It's the two pack Ivory Ella by Conair backpacks. So if you're running around a town or you're jetting off for a weekend getaway, then this is the perfect bag for you. So all styles have an exterior pocket with a zipper closure. That's good. And enough room for all of your on the go essentials. Love it. So normally it's as much as $70. Oy. I mean, it's still good for that, but that's, I wouldn't pay, I don't think that. Yeah, well, we've got two for 15. It's saving 79%. Bag me up some money because I'm saving. Oh yeah, I love this color too. I do too, that pink, that, again, that pale pink we're loving, right? I love it and I love like the fact that it's got these little side pockets so you can put your phone and easy accessible items here. Very smart. And that zipper's good for safety. And also saving good. the elephants, I mean, I'm here for it. I'm always here for that. Now, Tori, let's cut right to the chase <laughs> with this Cuisinart Advantage six piece ceramic coated color knife set. So Cuisinart stands for quality and these knives come with color coded that is gonna help cross contamination. And how unbelievable is this? They have a lifetime warranty. Whoa. Lifetime! Which means it's definitely a cut above the rest. <laughs> Uh, so normally it's as much as $40, but right now it's only $19, which means our viewers at Daily Blast Live are going to save 53%. Knives are expensive. These are good looking. They're very cute and will pop in your kitchen. If you're cooking with like raw chicken yeah. and then you've got vegetables, it's so easy to like possibly get sick from yeah, that, yeah, you yeah. know? So this is a really great way of keeping everything separate and just remembering which knife you've used because it's so brightly colored. And then last but definitely not least, Whoa. we're not gonna be rubbing you up the wrong way with <laughs> this deal. <laughs> Life Pro Radiate Plus Thigh, Car and Foot Massager. A three in one. <laughs> so you may have heard of compression socks, but this is the next level. This is gonna help soothe your aches and pains. So it's got six massage modes, two heat levels mm. and three levels for support and relief. So normally these are $195, but we've got it for only $115, saving up to 41%. Oh. You know what my favorite part about that is the heat. I oh, love yeah. they included heat. These are all fantastic. Head on over to MorningSave.com, guys, to snag these amazing deals at the lowest prices. We always do it for you, our DBL Nation. You can visit MorningSave.com on your smartphone as well. Thank you so much, Steph. We'll be right back. A July 7th press release from NASA went viral when it became the subject of an article from British newspaper The Telegraph. The article claims NASA has predicted a wobble in the moon's Earth will lead to an onslaught of coastal flooding in the 2030s. And a misleading tweet with nearly 30,000 likes says the main cause of future coastal flooding will be a regular wobble in the moon's orbit. So let's verify. Did NASA predict a wobble in the moon's orbit will be the main cause of coastal flooding in the 2030s? Our sources are a NASA press release, Dr. Ben Hamlington, co-author of the study and team lead, University of Massachusetts Department of Astronomy, and a 2019 study of nodal tidal cycles by Earth Observatory of Singapore. The NASA Sea Level Change Science Team study predicts that high tide flooding will be dramatically increased on all U.S. coastlines by the mid-2030s. The team found that a combination of rising sea levels caused by climate change and the alignment of a cycle in the moon's orbit will be the cause of this. Climate change will continue to bring the sea levels up, by 2030, NASA predicts sea levels will be at a tipping point, hovering just below the flood line. At that level, tides don't need to change much to start flooding coastlines. So what's the deal with the wobble? Every 18.6 years, the moon's orbit shifts a bit between two points, according to the University of Massachusetts Astronomy Department. This shift or wobble impacts the moon's gravitational pull, which in turn causes high tides to get higher and low tides to get lower. According to the 2019 study, Earth Observatory of Singapore predicts 2025 and 2034 are when this amplifying cycle will reach its next two high water peaks. High tides during those peaks are about four inches above normal. According to Dr. Hamlington, team lead of NASA's sea level change science team, that can be devastating for coastal towns. It's something that over time, so as it continues to happen, continues to increase, it does damage infrastructure. So it's something that can cause 
uh, damage to buildings, roads, things like that. This wobble isn't anything new. It's how the moon has always orbited the Earth. So we can verify, no, NASA did not predict the moon's wobble will be the main cause of coastal flooding in the 2030s. The only new element to worsen tidal flooding will be sea level rise induced by climate change. With your Verify, I'm Ariane Daytill. Hey, what's going on, DBL Nation? I'm Brandon London. I told my mom at a young age I wanted to play professional football, and she said, show me. So I worked my tail off. I would describe myself as the host that brings energy to the panel. Are you not entertained? My perspective doesn't really come from a book. It comes from different experiences. This is that social injustice that Colin Kaepernick took a knee for. The co-host that makes me most hopeful is hands down my big sister, Erica Cobb. She just makes me better as a person, not only on camera, but off camera. Don't show her that. DBL is raw, DBL is live, DBL is opinionated, and DBL is what you should be watching. DBL is back with all new shows live. And this is where I'm gonna push back. And I can't follow that. I'm not gonna sit on the show and not say anything. If you disagree with us, that's A-OK. -okay. DBL, all new, every day. Welcome back to DBL. We have some more questions from our viewers. This one's for Al. Okay, Al, you ready? Mm -hmm. Andrea wants to know, what's harder, teaching middle school or dealing with hecklers while performing stand-up? Oh, I think I'd, I'd say hecklers, because uh, at least my students were sober. Like a, a heckler, <laughs> like, sometimes they're not even being mean. They just, like, have forgotten they're at a show. Like, literally, they've had that many drinks, so you're like, sir. You're not you ever a red lobster. You need, <laughs> do you ever yeah. address a heckler or do you just let? No, I address it when I notice other tables noticing it because you'll see almost like at a movie, you'll see people kind of like looking and once, because some people are really just trying to have a good time and you don't want to go after them. But and if you say something, they'll quiet down, but other people are just there I'm to make it about that. I'm going to fight through Tori as a co-host into that scenario. That would be bad. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> I love you. And the next one is for me. Ooh. Shannon asks, Sam, what is your favorite thing to cook and why? I am not a Jeff. I'm not the best cook, but I do cook every night because I have two kids. Luckily, they're kids and they like basic stuff like macaroni and cheese <laughs> or chicken nuggets or, you know, basic stuff. Spaghetti. Does Mark cook too? Mark's not a big cook either. Neither. I'm more of the cook in the family. I and appreciate I'm not you that going good. all out for your kids though. Nuggets, they would never want pasta. a fancy lasagna. Lasagna. Well, they'll, they'll they never have it never, at this rate. Do they gobble Maybe hot up my dogs food. by 20, They 25. gobble up my food. How do you know they don't like it if you never made it? Yeah, well, Maybe she, they love she's lasagna. fine and happy. Because when we go out to dinner and I order something nice and I try and give them something nice. Well, you've destroyed their palate by <laughs> carpet bombing it with nuggets. Every two-year-old, three-year-old, and four-year-old likes mac and cheese. Thank you very much. DBL's new every day. We'll see you again same time, same place. Bye. The track in Tokyo is literally built for speed. Let's connect the dots. The company Mondo is behind it. They're also responsible for 12 other Olympic game services, but this one is an upgrade. The top layer is hardened with rubber and the bottom layer filled with air cavities that help with shock absorption. That helps runners fly down the track. Many athletes have commented on how bouncy the track feels. The surface is still pretty new too. The track went up in 2019, but it didn't see much action before the summer games. There's one event in particular that could really be poised to break records. Experts say this bouncy surface could give hurdlers an extra advantage. And that is Connecting the Dots. Hey, BBL Nation, I'm Lindsey Granger. I'm a trained journalist. I've been doing this for 10 years, and I learned to extensively research. I've written a documentary. I describe myself as the host that will bring a fresh perspective to the panel. I think Tori and I might disagree. Not a nice thing for the president to say. Everyone's blowing out of proportion. But that's okay, because today we need that. DBL is a creative, fun, and fast-paced type of show. Who wouldn't want to be at DBL? I'm looking forward to joining the panel and getting into some fun, interesting, and intense conversations. But it's important today. We need to agree to disagree and have the dialogue. A lot of people watch TV and say, how am I represented? DBL is the answer to that question. I'm Lindsey Granger, and I hope to be your voice.
DBL is your daytime destination. I, I get me. very excited. I was excited with you. Okay, okay. thank you. Thank you. <laughs> we are fired up. I am feeling very disagreeable. Educate yourself. Though right. I gotta push back because sometimes. No, no, I won't accept that. <laughs> Check that. And having fun. Did you have two straws and a strawberry shake. <laughs> Yeah, I felt it in my heart black. and in my soul. What's That's Jack right. thinking? I don't want to get canceled. <laughs> DBL's all new every day.